Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're out at the range to play around with some rifles you very rarely see here on the Military Arms Channel. And the rifles are lever action guns. I love lever action rifles. This goes back to my childhood, watching old Western movies and the lever action rifles that were used. And it's just kind of an iconic piece of American history because it ties, these rifles tie us to our past. And that past is what really identifies uh, America globally. And that's the whole cowboy era of our past, or our history. And so again, a, the lever action rifle like this 1873 Winchester, which is a replica made by Winchester, manufactured in Japan, but sold here in the United States. This is a replica of one of the most iconic lever actions ever produced back in the 1870s, and that would be the 1873 Winchester lever gun, like this one right here. Again, this is a brand new made gun. I actually picked it up used at a local gun shop. These things are ridiculously expensive when they're sold new but my local gun shop stole it from somebody and I got it for a darn good price, which is why I have it. Now I have other lever action rifles in my collection. I should have brought out my old Marlin, I didn't, but my old Marlin I used back in the 1990s in cowboy action shooting. So yes, I actually used to do that. I used to compete and I used to do it in the cowboy action realm. I don't have time for competition anymore. I wish I did. It would be a lot of fun to go out and do three gun matches and things like that. I just don't have time for it. Heck, I'd just like to have time to reload again. I don't have time for that. But anyway, back to this little 1873 Winchester. Again, this is a brand new produced gun. It's kind of cool. It has the top cover on it, the dust cover, just like the original, it has a brass riser block that loads the round up into the chamber. And we'll talk a little bit more about this rifle in detail. We've also brought out a more modern lever action rifle from our friends over at Henry Rifles, and it's in 45 Long Colt. So this one's 357 38, and the other's in 45 Long Colt. I favor 38 357 because that's a caliber I used when I competed back in the 90s. And yeah, it's kind of cool. It's a fun little cartridge. So I'm only shooting 38 specials out of it, but you can actually shoot 357 mags if you so choose to. To load these old guns, you know, you can check the chamber. This is your bolt, it's really kind of a spindly arrangement, but there's your bolt, and you can see how the riser block works. To load it, just have your lever back, have a little trap door here, and you just push the rounds in one by one. Now this one with 38 specials should hold 11 rounds. And this should be 11. I try to go for number 12, it probably won't fit. Nope, so you get one extra round of 38 specials. So this is 11 rounds in the tubular magazine that sets below the barrel. Therefore, this is an assault weapon by Diane Feinstein's definition if we go by rounds that it holds only. All right, so let's see if this bad boy's on. It should be, I've shot it before. Let's go after the man-sized challenge target about 50 yards away. There you go, guys. So, the repeating rifle. This really changed things for the West. The American Indians got their hands on them and uh, gave some of our U.S. Army troops back in the day hell with these things. Uh, these were never really adopted by the military, the U.S. military, but it was a very, very common rifle to find out in the Old West. So anyway, let's take a look at the Henry rifle, which is chambered in 45 Long Colt, which is a more modern take on a classic design like this old Winchester reproduction. All right guys, now I have a Henry Big Boy Steel Carbine. This is a short, handy little rifle chambered in 45 Long Colt. This is a beautiful reproduction of a lever action. I don't know how historically accurate it is of anything that may have actually existed in the 1800s or after the 1800s and the early 1900s, but it's a handy little rifle. It has this big loop on it, which was made popular back in the 50s when they did a bunch of cowboy movies and you know television shows, they'd have those big loops on them. Um, it's kind of cool looking, but from a functional standpoint, I prefer just a standard lever because when you go to throw your hand, down to cycle the action, you're actually banging your knuckles into this and your knuckles get a good run at that steel and if you shoot it all day long, it can become a little bit uncomfortable. This rifle also has buckhorn sights on it, which is just like the Winchester I was shooting when we opened up the video. I don't necessarily like buckhorn sights. I have a hard time using them properly. A lot of folks like them. 
I don't. Now I will admit though, this Henry has a sight picture that is vastly improved over that of the Winchester, 1873. But this thing has beautiful walnut stocks, has a recoil pad. I don't know that 45 long Colt is that necessarily powerful that it requires a recoil pad, but it's there just in case. Maybe if you're using some of the hotter stuff and you're recoil sensitive, you might find that handy. But this would make a good little deer rifle because the top of it is drill and tapped for a scope mount. So Indiana for a long time, not for a long time, for a few years, we could only use pistol caliber carbines to hunt deer. We couldn't use regular center fire car calibers like 308 and stuff like that. So we'd have to use rifles similar to this Henry. So this little guy, instead of having a loading gate right here on the receiver, like on the Winchester, loads from a tubular magazine right here. Look at that. See that brass colored round? It looks like a, a silhouette of a 45 long Colt cartridge. Well, that's because that's where it loads. Here in the front, you have a little pin. I'm gonna push down on this thing, it's on this knurled knob, and pull it out, and you'll see this brass tube start to come out. Now, you can pull this brass tube up until it clears this port, and you can load the rounds individually just by dropping them in. And this one holds eight rounds of 45 long Colt, or you can do what I prefer to do, because it's on the verge of practically falling out anyway when you have it up that far, is just simply take it out. And then you can continue to load either through the little window here, or you can just drop them down from the top. Just makes it a little easier to do if you ask me. And then you're not chasing your magazine spring around when it falls on the ground. We're shooting some freedom munitions here. This is 255 grain bullets of smokeless powder, of course. That should be eight. So you can see how number eight sits in there just like that. Now, as I mentioned, your recoil, or not your recoil, your uh, magazine spring resides in this brass tube. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put the tube back in. I'm gonna have to index this little pin as I push it down. And you'll see how that little pin slides in that slot, twist it, and the spring pressure should keep it forward into a little recess. And that is how you load up your Henry rifle. Now, all you have to do, it is a single action, just like the other Winchester I was shooting at the opening of the video. Run that action, chamber around, and you're off to the races. All right, guys, you can that quickly put eight aim shots on target, and there's people far faster than me using lever actions. Uh, these things would have given the 1880s era uh, Diane Feinstein a heart attack, much like an AR-15 does today. These would have been considered the assault weapons of their era. As a matter of fact, the original Henry rifle was used during the Civil War, and that thing gave a pretty good advantage to whichever side was using it. It was typically purchased by the troops. So anyway, yeah, a lot of fun. Let's load up some more ammunition and do some more shooting with these old girls. I like the, the safety that's on the lever of the Henry much more than I like the safety of the Winchester. When you break the lever down and you're loading the rifle, when you come back, there's a little tiny nub right here by my index finger. That's your safety. This portion of the loop is gonna press on that safety to make the gun able to fire. So if the loop is right here just out of battery, that's about how far I can push it before it wants to snap into place. The gun can't be fired. But as soon as I snap it into place, it hits that safety, and now the gun can be fired. With the Winchester, it's a completely different ball of wax. I also want to point out one other thing, though. One thing about this style of lever action is that you have to load it from here. So if you're out shooting and you want to top the gun off, you've not completely emptied the firearm, but you want to add some extra ammunition to it. If you have a live round in the chamber, this can be very dangerous. So, you know, if you're going to do it, I don't necessarily recommend you do it, but if you're going to do it, make sure you, you fire, leave a spent case in the chamber, but now you have to go up here and load through this chute by taking out your magazine spring and guide rod or spring and rod or whatever you call that particular item. 
So you have to basically have your hand out here in front of the muzzle to top the gun off. Now, with the Winchester, you can see on the lever, we have that same surface area here on the lever. It doesn't want to snap closed. It naturally wants to stay away from that little silver pin right there by my index finger. That's the safety. That has to be pushed up. You can see where it's blocking the trigger's movement right there by my index finger. So when you close this lever, it naturally wants to rest there until you pinch it and that, de that deactivates that safety or activates the safety, releases the safety. But when I let go of it, the lever naturally wants to spring away so the gun can't fire. So when you're shooting it, you got to keep a tight grip. So you run the action, you break your grip on the action, you come back, you got to make sure you make a conscious effort to pinch that lever closed. Otherwise, the safety is going to prevent you from fry, firing the rifle. And in something like uh, cowboy action shooting, that can be a bit of a pain in the rear end. So you got to cycle it and then pinch it, make sure you have it pinched while you're pulling the trigger. All right, so I just fired around, have a spent case in the chamber, but now, because the loading port's right here, I can top the rifle off very easily. I don't have to put my hand out in front of the muzzle. I kind of like that feature of lever action guns that use this side loading gate. And this is more or less for plinking. If you're shooting this much at an animal, you probably shouldn't be out there shooting at him. You need to be at the target range learning marksmanship. All right. Got 11 rounds to go. See, I didn't have it right there. I'm moving the gun around. I'm trying to pinch that lever. I can't get that lever to close. There we go. Yeah, it's like I'm having to squeeze it and it's causing me to move the whole rifle around. But yeah, I don't like the fact that you have to pinch that. I much prefer the Henry Rifles method of once you get this closed, it takes that safety off. So you're not consciously always when you're trying to shoot fast, squeeze that grip really tightly because it's kind of hard for me to do with my ape-like arms and big hands. So there you go. The benefits and the detractors of both systems. Of course I can't 1980s hip fire this rifle, but I can 1880s hip fire it. Let's see how well it does. <laughs> Not too bad. That's actually kind of fun. <laughs> what a fun little rifle. All right, let's try it with the 45 Long Colt. All right, let's 1880s hip fire the old Henry here. <laughs> they both work just fine hip shooting them. That's a lot of fun. Man, I wish I had more ammunition to shoot out of this thing. I think we're running kind of low. One thing that's really cool about Henry Rifles is that you can pick up just about any caliber your heart desires. They have a whole bunch of different lines of rifles. They have their classic lines, their modern lines. They have stuff for just about anybody and just about any caliber you can dream of. Everything from 22 all the way up to 44, 40, 45 Long Colt. I mean, just about anything you can think of. So that's kind of neat to see that that company is making that number of lever action rifles because like I said, lever actions are as American as baseball and apple pie. All right, here we go, a few more rounds. Ah, yes, love it. Way too much fun. Makes me want to get back into cowboy action shooting, sort of. Do people still do that? I don't hear much about it anymore.
Well guys, to tie things up, we've come back to the 75 yard line with the Henry 45 Long Colt rifle. And we're gonna shoot at the man sized steel target. Just offhand shooting, having some fun with it. We really hope you enjoyed coming out with this and doing a little bit of shooting with these old lever action rifles. I can't really say they're old. One is a reproduction of an old rifle, but it's modern. And this is a modern take on the lever action concept. One thing I did notice about this little Henry, it's light, it's handy, and it'd be a nice little field rifle. You can sling it if you want to, but what a neat caliber and a neat rifle and a handy little package. Just walking around the woods with one of these just seems like something fun to do. I'll have to do that later this summer. Guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, a great way to do that is to become a patron supporter. We're 100% fan supported, viewer supported. Also, you can swing by our Forge from Freedom t-shirt store. We have Forge from Freedom links down below. We can swing by and pick up a t-shirt. That's another way that you can support us here. But you can also swing by and check us out at Copper Custom, which is coppercustom.com. That's our online store. A lot of great products at great prices. Guys, this is 10 years we've been doing this. We've enjoyed the, these 10 years and we look forward to 10 more years, hopefully as long as YouTube allows us to remain on their site. But every day YouTube keeps striking more and more gun channels. Even Facebook is starting to shut gun pages down and it's just getting annoying. So let those social media giants know that you want to see your favorite gun channels, guys. That's all we can do is just voice our opinions. But if that all falls apart, you can always find us over at full30.com, which is full30.com. You're gonna find most of your top firearms content creators already over there. All right, guys, I don't know how many rounds I loaded in this thing. I think eight. I'm gonna try my luck at Mr. Steel Gong here at 75 yards. Hear how long it takes that old 45 to get down range? I dropped one out of them, but that's not too shabby. What a fun gun to shoot. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you guys soon.